Welcome to your first session on Python. We're happy to have you here. Excited to be learning one of the most popular technologies of this era that is also becoming the world's most popular coding language as The Economist says. Not only does it open doors for higher paid opportunities and exciting careers like data science and machine learning, it is a general purpose language. Learning Python will let you build a lot of cool stuff. Without further ado, let's begin. In this lecture, we'll introduce Python, its history, features and components, and then we'll talk about the frameworks for and flavors of Python. Finally, we'll discuss why it is so important to learn it. Simply put, Python is an interpreted high-level programming language that's great for general-purpose programming. What are all these terms? Let's find out one term at a time. When we say Python is interpreted, we mean each statement of your code is translated into subroutines. The interpreter executes one statement at a time. It follows the REPL philosophy, which is read, evaluate, print, loop. More on that later. Python is platform independent. Gone are the days when you would need to write separate code for each platform you want to run it on. With Python, you write your code once and run it anywhere. Python is dynamically typed. If you come from a C++ or Java background, you probably dread having to declare the type of variable every time you declare it. With Python, you don't need to declare types. These are determined at runtime. If you do not come from such a background, however, don't worry. Learning Python is easy. When you finish this course, you'll be confident in it. It is easier to debug. Whenever it encounters an exception, it prints out a detailed stack trace so you know what went wrong. Python implements automatic memory management so you don't need to do it manually. It also lets you add or modify functions at runtime. It makes testing easier by removing the need to recompile again just to test a small section. Sure, Python is slower compared to Java, but that doesn't take away from how powerful it is. Duck typing makes it easy on the programmer while coding but can also lead to runtime errors. Too much information? Don't worry, we'll cover everything as we progress through the course. Okay, now what do you mean by a high-level programming language? Well, a high-level language implements strong abstraction. The programmer doesn't need to memorize system architecture. Such a language is closer to the programmer. It is also true that a high-level programming language sounds much like natural language. Writing code in Python is much like writing in English. Because of how simple it is, Python is now being used as an introductory language in schools and colleges to introduce students to programming. Automatic memory management also makes it high-level. What is all the hype? And is it really worth learning Python? Well, it is powerful and is used by so many big names like Instagram, YouTube, Google, Quora, Reddit, Spotify, Yahoo, and Bitly. So it must be something, right? Python is all the hype these days, but it really has a long history behind it. In 1980, Python was conceived and named after the British comedy series Monty Python's Flying Circus. In December of 1989, Guido van Rossum began implementing it at CWI in the Netherlands. Python showed up as a successor to the ABC language, which was capable of exception handling and interfacing with the Amoeba OS. On October 16 of year 2000, Python 2.0 released with features like cycle detecting garbage collector for memory management and support for Unicode. Python 3.0 followed on December 3, 2008. 
2017 observed the advent of the Python 2.7 to Go transcompiler. Although a lot of projects currently operate on Python 2.x, it will retire on January 1, 2020. After that, it will no longer be maintained. The future really belongs to Python 3, and that is what we'll learn in this tutorial. As discussed earlier, Guido Van Rossum named Python after the British comedy series Monty Python's Flying Circus. Let's discuss features of Python to find out what makes it so powerful. Python is easy to read and easy to code in. It is also easy to learn. It is interpreted like we saw in the beginning of this session. It executes one line at a time. Python is object oriented. It lets us model the real world and focuses on classes and objects. It is free and open source. The source code is freely available to the public. Python is portable. One code works on multiple platforms. You can build basic GUI with it. Python has a large standard library with powerful modules and packages, so you can just borrow code and don't have to reinvent the wheel. Python is also dynamically typed. We don't need to declare the type of a variable. That is determined at runtime. It is also extensible and embeddable. You can write some of your code in other languages like C++, and can also embed it in code in other languages. Now you know what Python is, but what does it look like? It has functions, classes, modules, and packages. Functions are collections of statements, so you can reuse code and don't have to write it over and over. A function may return a value. Classes are abstract data types. They are like blueprints for objects and hold no values themselves. Modules are collections of related classes and functions. Packages are collections of related modules. We'll discuss modules and packages in detail in the later weeks of this course. Let's talk about frameworks. A framework is an abstraction. It provides all the logic and facilities you would need for a particular purpose. Say you want to develop a web application with Python. You can do it over and over for each app, or you can have a framework do it for you. Take your pick. You can do without a framework, but it only makes it easier for you. Python has many popular and powerful frameworks like Django, Flask, and Web2Py. Django is a free and open source framework, great for developing database-driven websites. It follows the dry principle: don't repeat yourself. Popular services like Instagram, Mozilla, and Discuss use it. Flask is a web framework and is a micro framework. It does not support database abstraction layers or form validation, but it lets you use extensions to add extra features. Bottle is another micro framework. It is good for web development and is fast, lightweight, and simple. Tornado is an open source web framework that's high performing and scalable. It is written in Python. Pyramid is a web framework. It is not a mega framework. It is not a micro framework, but provides just the right amount of liberty for projects. Web2Py is an open source web framework.
that encourages rapid development and supports the MVC architecture. It is written in Python. Pylons is another open source web framework that vigorously uses third party tools. This is a deprecated framework. Maybe you should look for something else. Python ships in a multitude of flavors. C Python is the most common. It is written in C and is an interpreter. Iron Python is implemented in C Sharp. It can function as an extensibility layer to application frameworks written in a .NET language. Jython is written in Java. It can import Java classes and compiles to Java bytecode. MicroPython is designed to run on a microcontroller. It uses a MicroPython board which runs on bare metal. PyPy is implemented in Python. It is fast and easy to experiment with. Brighton stands for Browser Python. It runs in the browser. Ruby Python acts as a bridge between the Python and Ruby interpreters. It assembles data between the Python and Ruby virtual machines. So what can you do with Python? You can build a website, develop a game, perform computer vision to detect faces and such, perform machine learning to give machines the ability to learn, build robots, conveniently scrape the web for data, analyze data, automate a web browser, write a script, carry out scientific computing, build AI, and so much more. The possibilities are endless. Are you prepared? Each language has its benefits and limitations. Different languages suit different needs and projects. Are you ready to explore all that Python has to offer? I am Ayushi Sharma. See you in the next lecture.